in last week's episode. All right, well, that was a bit of a mission to uh, get everyone up, but we did in the end. Just got this washout here, and obviously the troopies are concerned with the trailer. Through that section, next section here, we've got some uh, few twisties, which are fun. And then we've got a very steep lean, which is not so fun. This week. All right, we're here at Pro Camp Solutions. Something pretty exciting is happening because we are on the way home. After our mozzie incident just then, that was, that was crazy. We were not staying there. Um, I suppose we're doing a little channel update, I suppose, or like Yay. where we're at now. Hi, I'm Matt. And this is Holly. We've been exploring and traveling around Australia in our old Toyotas for the past three years, going to some incredible locations. Subscribe to join our adventures. All right, we're here at Pro Camp Solutions. Something pretty exciting is happening. We're getting a new awning on the Troopy. So we're getting a freestanding 270 degree awning from Camp King Industries, so Camp King do the tent as well uh, that we have in the Troopy. We love the tent. It's changed the way we camp and just how comfortable we are and how practical everything is. Uh, so we're getting their awning on, which is fitting onto the tent. The bracket system they've got is awesome. It's strong as. Fit and finish on these things is unbelievable. And uh, Holly and I are, yeah, really excited to have a freestanding 270 degree awning. Uh, in the Troopy, it'll make a lot of sense just having the cover at the back and just uh, the way we travel, it's fast setups, fast pack ups. Uh, we're moving constantly, so uh, yeah, really excited and really excited to test it out on the way home and uh, to put it up at the four wheel drive show in uh, Perth. Excited. Alright, hello everyone, welcome to another episode. So we've been really busy. Uh, we're down near Perth, we're at Black Diamond Lake. As you can see, it's really blue, aqua sort of colour. A um, bit of blue green algae or something, but it looks cool. Um, we've been at the four wheel drive show in Perth, so if you did come and say good day to us, thank you very much. And Adelaide as well, thank you very, very much for coming and saying hello if you did. Uh, it was really good meeting everyone, and yeah, we had so much fun. New edition, Cam King Industries Protector Series. 270 degree awning. Uh, as you can see, unreal. We'd have stopped over for lunch, set it up, we're in the shade, it's like a minute set up, not even, 30 seconds. And yeah, we're absolutely loving it so far. So really keen to give this a good test for this trip home because we are on the way home. We've got to get back in about 10 days time uh, for a photo shoot. So yeah, it'll just be a pretty cruisy drive back across the country. There's been a lot of rain, so that's going to be interesting seeing all the water around could make for an interesting drive, but yeah, can you give this bad boy a test? And yeah, we're just loving it so far. It is really nice. We'll have some lunch. What's your initial thoughts in the awning hole? It's awesome. Like, obviously we had it up for the show, um, and a lot of people did ask us how we liked it, and we couldn't really give them a definitive answer because we hadn't used it yet. But we did travel with Adrian through the Simpson, and he was running it. And it's just so quick, convenient, and easy. Like, even though we're somewhat shaded here with the trees, it's just so much cooler being completely covered. Yeah, well, you'd be in full sun. Yeah. If um. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'd be in full sun right now. Like the way that this is coming in, we'd be in full sun. So it's really nice just being able to set up just for a quick lunch. Like there's no way yeah. with the old awning we would have set it up. And I guess it's like for us, the cooler we can stay, the better traveling in LC. Yep. Like. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. Yeah, love, love it. it. Love it. So good.
wheels were mine We played hide and seek for hours Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore playful and free Without a care in the world I was one rich little girl What the f Steering wheel. Kitty. They're huge. Oh my gosh. Um. Ah! The back door's open. Oh, oh shit. Me. <laughs> hey. Oh f Run, 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 run. After our mozzie incident just then, that was, that was crazy. We were not staying there. We came on to the next town. Ongrup? It's a funny little place to say the least, and the caravan park here is a funny little caravan park to match. Uh, but anyway, 20 bucks a night, unpowered, can't complain with that. Place to cook, <laughs> do your dishes, hot showers, so we'll probably just cook inside, have a shower, pop the tent, and go to bed, and get up early tomorrow to drive. So this is definitely uh, one of your more unglamorous um, kind of situations you get when you're traveling around Australia. It's not always stunning campsites. Sometimes, yeah, it's freezing cold, windy, and mozzies descend upon you to the point where you can't even stay there. And then you go to an odd little town. Sorry if you're from Ongarup, but it's a bit odd. <laughs> no, it's nice. Nice place, very lucky. Cool. Good morning, everyone. So it's about 20 past 7, uh, we are up and at it and back on the road, so it was a fine night's sleep though, it was bloody cold. Yeah, there's a, so nice cold. Little, there's a nice little van park actually at the end, there's a good kitchen. Yeah, it was like an old house that you could go into and use, which was convenient because it was so cold. Um, today we're just going to keep driving and hopefully make it halfway along the Nullarbor to see how we go. Um, yeah, not much more to report. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Where are right. we? We're just off the, we're actually pretty really close to Baladonia, just on the air highway going east towards yes. New South Wales. <laughs> yeah, still in WA. Um, yeah. Pretty uneventful drive today. Really not much to film. No, uh, just yeah. a, lot of, a lot of road. A lot of road. I think we did about seven and a half hours today. Um, and luckily, so it's what, end of November or mid November. We somehow have found a cold patch of weather yeah. to drive home in, which we are so thankful for. So lucky. We were dreading this <laughs> drive back. We were thinking mid-November, it's going to be stinking hot. Uh, so yeah, we've been super lucky. Super so lucky. So lucky. All right. Um, I suppose we're doing a little channel update, I suppose, or like yeah. where we're at now. We haven't really done anything like this in a little while. Um, I mean, the year's coming to a close and Holly and I pretty much this whole year had a really good crack at getting the whole media mm. side of our business going and pretty much moving into this full time. Not just YouTube, no. but everything else that sort of goes along with it. So we've yeah. been doing freelance photography, videography, working for tourism boards, uh, 
editing, social work, like social media scheduling, things like that, just to... Pretty much whoever wants to pay us money will do, <laughs> do anything. <laughs> but it's but, all yeah. in this space. Mm. So the work that we have done, videography, photography work, other than tourism boards, that is based, again, in the four-wheel drive space. So we did a shoot with Oricom this year. We've done a shoot with Sabre Off-Road. Um, yeah, so it's all still based around touring, traveling, four-wheel drives, four-wheel drive gear. Yep, four-wheel drive shows. Yeah. So, and I think as the year's coming to a close, we're sort of like, it's gone pretty well. I think we could mm. make it work. Uh, we'll definitely like more work and more money, Yeah. Um, as always, but uh, I think it's going all right. Yeah. Uh, for the first yeah. year, it's been going better every quarter. Yeah. So I think we're pretty confident we can keep doing this. So we're, we're going to start shooting weddings as well. Yes. Uh, we've got our first one coming up really soon. Uh, we might have already done it by now. This video's out. Who knows? Anyway, that's... Uh, so if you do need a wedding filmed, uh, <laughs> well, you, you can probably anyone. check out some of our uh, recent work yeah. and yeah, you can book us in. And we'll um, travel. We're, as you know, we're more than happy to travel. Yeah, more than so. happy to travel to, travel to a place to get to get it done. Yeah. Um, so moving into that, I suppose we kind of want to do a little video in regards to, I mean, who is Overland Travellers? I mean, who mm. are we? What are we doing now? And why do people watch us? <clears throat> yeah. So the reason we're sort of going into this is because it's it's sometimes hard and a bit daunting to do any kind of major change on a YouTube channel for fear of people, uh, you know, just saying that you've changed backlash. and backlash for that change. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to sort of do anything. And yeah, yeah it's daunting. Um, we're mm. sort of saying this because Holly and I are considering uh, looking into options for a new car. Now, before I get a million messages asking, no, Elsie's not for sale. We're keeping Elsie <laughs> forever. Um, we're keeping Elsie forever. We love Elsie. Uh, but when we bought her, it was just a bit of fun. It was sort of like a, a yeah. challenge. It was going to be a hobby car. Yeah. And now it's our work vehicle. And a 40-year-old car as a work vehicle, and I'm not talking like a farm work vehicle or trade vehicle. Like I'm talking like remote camera rig living uh, out of home living on out wheels. of home on wheels yeah massive k's huge drives uh it's not the greatest car <clears throat> now when we started the channel <clears throat> yeah we were we quickly got a reputation as a budget channel when we traveled around australia <clears throat> we had king's gear all over the car we had a diy uh, diy inside of the canopy it was rough but we got around the whole country and we had the yeah. best year ever. Yeah, it was definitely um, the best thing we've ever done. Taking, yeah. yeah, that time off to travel Australia. So I would highly recommend, you know, if mm. anyone was thinking about doing it, definitely do it. Um, yeah, whatever you set up, it's possible. Exactly. And one thing I spoke to a couple about at the show this weekend, just gone, was don't spend all your money on gear straight up, like because then you need, then you won't have any money to travel. Yeah. So and build it up slowly. Build, yeah. Figure out what you need. Go for little camping trips. Um, when we first started the channel, the first couple of videos, the Hilux didn't have a canopy on it. Mm. Uh, we had stuff in the tray, and then even before that, our first camp setup, we could fit everything in the space cab of the Hilux. That was it. Yeah. Uh, so we sort of started the channel and not really knowing where it was going to go. I always said, you know. Or, you know, we were just happy to do the films just because we enjoyed them, even if it was just our mums watching it, whatever. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it's grown from there. We've built a community. Now, we're still not a big chat. I mean, 30,000, a bit over 30,000 now. It's respectable, and it's going up quite well now. So, it's definitely on the radar, I think. Yeah. Um, but we started the channel, budget gear, and people would always comment, oh, you know, it's so good seeing people in these realistic rigs getting around. Um, you know, some people are driving around in these, you know, two hundred thousand dollar rigs and you know it's not achievable and all this kind of stuff and and uh yeah i don't know so it's kind of yeah we've had that reputation build up over mm. the years and uh then we got elsie and i suppose people are like wow that's an amazing effort like you've got this old car restore restored just gave it a <laughs> lick of paint in a shed yourself yeah. Um, but we've got it to a point now where we travelled through the Simpson Desert, which is yeah. something I never thought we would do in Elsie. Uh, mainly because of Adrian, I was really confident going with him. But yeah. you know, we've taken this car on this trip now, nearly thirty thousand k's, all like back and forth, up and down across the country. Yeah. Uh, so we've really given it a good nudge, and uh, I think something that people haven't noticed as much is 
we've slowly transitioned uh, from our budget gear. I don't know, like, we don't have budget gear in this car anymore. Like, yeah. we depend on it. I mean, our tent is not a cheap tent. It is an expensive tent. It is the best of the best. This awning now, it's an expensive awning. Red Art gear. We've got Shieldman seats. We've got all this nice stuff, but it makes mm. our jobs and our lives easier. I think we can justify that gear. Yeah. So it sort of gets me back to our, my original point, like, what is Overland Travellers? Who is Overland Travellers? And even when we did start getting the newer gear on this car, the, the you know, better quality stuff, some people would... We got backlash from it originally mm. when doing the car, and people said, oh, you've changed your sellouts and all the usual kind of diatribe people throw at you when you do that kind of thing. And the funny thing is, is, like, we have changed, but... You know, like we're completely different people to yeah. who were going camping on every second weekend out around the Blue Mountains in Sydney, just because that was all uh, that was available to us mm. in our dome tent. Like we are completely different people. It was five years ago, or five, yeah. four years ago now, and we've changed. We're not in our mid twenties anymore. We're late twenties, coming onto our thirties soon. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're completely different people and our, you know, Holly was working in finance for a Range Rover dealership and I was driving a light truck in Sydney, rubbish removal, demolition, and now we This is our job. This is our job. We're freelance videographers, photographers, media. It's yeah. so different. Um, so, our reasons for wanting to get a new car. Now, I've had a few people say, you know, I had a comment last night. A big comment. Uh, the person might be watching. Appreciate the comment, and he just sort of said, "Oh, I can tell you're a bit down on Elsie." It was from our Fraser video because we had some issues with with Elsie, and he said, "I can tell you're a bit down about Elsie, but you know, um, you know, you've always got these fail-safe redundancies with these older vehicles, and you can get it going, and all this kind of stuff. And and with a newer vehicle, you can't." And I was like, "Yes, but." Would a newer vehicle have those issues? Yeah, yeah. So it would even have those new issues in the first place. But also, it's not just about those kind of fail-safe redundancies. There's a lot of other aspects that go into um, owning a vehicle like this and doing what we do. So another thing is just safety. Mm. Uh, we just want something safer. We're doing a lot of Ks and uh, some pretty crazy four-wheel driving now. You know, some of the things yeah. and you sort of think... I've heard I've heard horror, horror stories. Um, I've heard these things. If you roll them, I heard they they fold like a house of cards, mm. which is not a very pretty picture. Yeah. Um, so something, I think something safer just is a bit more sensible. Uh, but also, like this is a fatiguing vehicle to drive. You, you don't jump out fresh. Like these seats have made a massive difference, and some of the interior mods that we've done, but. It's still a 40-year-old car. It's yeah. still noisy, loud, hot. These things were that when it came out. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, driving in town, like, Holly can't really drive it in town for parking and that. Like, she does a bloody good job driving it. But, you know, if you've got to park it in that, it's just a mission. It's a and, hard car to drive. And it is stressful when, you know, we are on Fraser, and that was sort of a bit of paid work. And we managed to sort of get the stuff done, but that was a bit more of a catastrophic failure. And if it was a bigger job... Mm. then we're not getting paid. Yeah. Um, we've got a job coming up in Febu February in the top end, or in northern uh, Australia, you know, uh, Queensland actually. And it's February. It's going to be stinking hot. And we're thinking, well, how are we going to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So... And a lot of people yeah. will probably say in the comments, because obviously we have mentioned aircon a million and one times. Yeah. Why don't you just put aircon air in it? Now, to get aircon in LC... It would be about three to four grand yep. um, to get source all the parts because you can't just buy a unit, whack it in. You've got to buy all the different parts and then get someone to fit it. And we know of people who have put aircon in 40 series and it doesn't work too well, or you know, when it starts to get hot when you want to use it, you can't because the car starts to overheat. Yeah, the so old for two us, hatches, that's, yeah. yeah, that's a big outlay of cash for something that may, may Mar help. Yeah, may, may help. Not work, those really so. hot days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's all those kind of things to consider, and then people say, well, why don't you get the money that you're going to spend on a new car and, and put it into Elsie? You could you could spend a million dollars on this car, and you would still have a forty year old car. Like it would still probably leak in my foot when it rains. Um, yeah, it's just and going to the bank and getting a loan, saying, hey, I want sixty thousand dollars to uh, restore a forty year old car. They'll just laugh me out. 
Um, not to mention that would be an expensive loan. It would be it would be dumb money. It'd be a stupid way yeah. to spend money. And those things always blow out. Whereas new cars these days, um, are, I mean, the second hand market is ridiculous at the moment. Mm. It's just so expensive and so it's cheaper to buy new at the moment it's it's cheaper to that's buy what new we're considering that's what so. we're considering um yeah yeah uh, yeah second hand market's just stupid you're buying if you're buying a 10 year old car even or something and it's you know only you know 15 grand less than when it was new you're thinking well what's you know you're just inheriting all these 10 year 10 years of worth of problems or mm. you know other people's problems yeah. you don't know how it's been treated and i mean for, Ho- for holly and i um I think it is justified, like, you know, getting something newer. And, I mean, of course we're going to have sponsored products on the car. That's just part of having a YouTube channel. Our audience is worth something. Now, how we approach that is going to hopefully be with as much integrity as possible. I feel like that's key and we we strive to do that. Um, there are only brands we sort of want to work with. Mm. We've been in the industry for a while now and... You know, I feel like we've got a, you know, a good gauge on, you know, companies that we're working with and, uh, yeah, I feel like, I feel like we, you know, the, the gear we're going to get in the car is the gear we, we're going to want. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, that's all an aspect of it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, I use the analogy. It's like if you have a freight company and, you know, you've got an older truck and it's not as big and you're just getting more and more work and you just need a bigger truck. No, you know, you never have any, you never have anyone question that and go, Oh geez, you guys are lucky getting a bigger truck, you know, or something yeah. like that. Um, so yeah, I suppose I just want to ask like, why do you watch us? Um, I would like to think it's for our personalities <laughs> for one, I'd hope. And also, uh, that you just like the films. Like we put a lot of effort into production and I would like to think you watch it because they're nice films. They're nice mm. to watch. They're a form of escapism, you know, where sort of, yeah, I, I, that's that's what I want to hear. And I would hope it's not as superficial as what car we're driving, be it a 20-year-old Hilux with King's gear, a 40-year-old car with really nice gear on it, or something brand new and mm. really nice. Um, yeah, and, I, and as Holly and I get older, we're going to keep evolving our setups i mean mm. the next setup for us after this new car will probably be towing with a van yeah um kids you know like we've got all that coming up so yeah it is going to keep changing the channel uh and our setups are going to have to um evolve with us yeah. so yeah comment below tell us why you watch us tell us your thoughts and let us know what type of car we should maybe look at getting what yeah. you would like to see we've got a few, we've got yeah. ideas for a few We've got ideas for a few, so tell us what you think. And I know some people are probably going to say, let's do something really different and out there. But to be honest, we're probably going to do something that's been done before. Yeah. Uh, because there's a reason that, you know, the you know those things that you see on YouTube a lot are done a lot. It's because they work and they're good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're sort of, we're not up for something different. I mean, we've got something different <laughs> here, right? Yeah, right here. But anyway. Yeah, and I suppose when we do get this new vehicle, obviously we are keeping LC. We would like to obviously you know, do trips with her every now and then, but more as maybe like an overnighter or a Sunday driver rather mm. than... We've got massive time. plans for LC. Yeah, right. We'd love to restore her properly. Like, yeah. properly. like yeah. give her the love she deserves. And, you know, she's made it this far, 40 years of just being flogged all around the country. Yeah. I think she's only in between six and 700,000 Ks. Just give us some love, but you know, that's going to cost a lot of money. But I'm talking body off, sandblaster chassis, panels, Maybe get them professionally someone. done. Yeah, pay someone to do it because <laughs> we're rubbish. We, uh, well, I'm right. I have no idea. Or do it myself over the course of 10 years. But yeah. I don't think I have the patience for that. Yeah. So, well, thank you for watching. Uh, <laughs> as always, um, please comment below, tell us your thoughts, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, but we're going to keep making films to the best of our ability. We're going to keep entertaining you and hopefully just show you uh, beautiful places around Australia. Yeah. That's the plan. And maybe one day worldwide. Who knows? Who we'll knows? See what We'd love to do that one day. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs> In next week's episode, we continue to head east and get hit with a whole lot of rain. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.